Hey Pilots Plasma 1945 and I'm going to talk to you about you needing more power or even better using power more intelligently to ensure your computer does not burn down to ensure that you have a good experience in your sim game or any other computer based endeavor. And this all comes from us having a first world problem. For those who play DCS or flight sims, we have a lot of accessories to play with. We've got our keyboard mouse, we've got our VRs, track IRs, pedals, MFD screens, and all kinds of other goodies that are coming our way. Now, this is a great time to be a pilot because we get all these accessories to make yourselves awesome environments. But there's a problem, and that is power and power distribution. Because everything that is connected to your computer, whether it's a stick or a VR headset or a control box, all needs power. Now, what do we do in this situation? Well, the most normal thing to do is to just plug everything in. So that stuff plugged in on the outside of the computer that we're talking about. Within the computer itself, there are numbers of components. Everybody knows about, hey, the latest GPU will draw this much power, the latest CPU will draw that much power. Absolutely. Other things that draw power in your computer are fans, storage, your RAM, your network, your Wi-Fi, and even those RGB lights, they will all draw power from your power supply. So having a good power supply is important. But it's not just the power supply because that power has to get fed to all the USB devices. Whether it's your track IR, your VR, your stick, even your microphone and webcam. People don't think about that, but those also draw power. And each time you add a device, it has to pull the power through your motherboard to your USB device. What can this do? This can cause your devices to lose power. Input lag, so you're flying and you get lag on your controls. It can also damage your external devices or even worse, it can damage your motherboard. What do we do? Well, we can get a bigger power supply. That is our first step. The problem is the power supply supplies power to the whole system, but it's the motherboard that supplies power to each individual USB port. And the ports are grouped so that they will also share their power amongst each other. Now there are some options that you should consider. Because the power is shared amongst devices, you can either distribute your devices to different ports on the motherboard or to give them more power. And of course, option three, that's really not an option, is to disconnect some devices. So first off, let's talk about disconnecting. We're probably not gonna do that because plugging stuff in and out is a pain in the butt. So what you can do is you can distribute your devices. Now, when I say distribute your devices, that is to look on the layout of your motherboard and USB ports and separating different devices out based on their power requirements. So making sure that you don't have a whole bunch of devices that draw a lot of power all on the same group of ports. And usually they're going to be labeled and color coded. So you can separate them out that way to help you out. The worst thing to do is to use a USB hub. Now for laptop users, many of you may have seen these or may have used these. The hub that is unpowered, which means it draws power from one port and splits it into four or five different additional ports. This is the worst thing to do because you're literally overloading a single port with a big power draw. So that's the unpowered hub. The best thing to have though is a powered hub. A powered hub will usually be a little bit more expensive, maybe $10, $15 more, but it will come with a dedicated power supply that will plug into the wall to provide the extra power your devices need. So you can use it on a laptop, you can use it on your PC, and for example, you can plug all your HOTAS, all your collectives, into that one box and then direct it into your computer. The benefit of it is that it's not going to overload the internal power on your motherboard. It's not gonna be sucking up too much juice from it. And it also usually comes with little buttons where you can disable individual devices that are plugged in. So for example, if you have a conflict between a collective and a throttle, well, you can push a button to disable it. So this is a very useful device and I strongly recommend getting one of these. That's what I've got and I've got some links in the description for you guys to check them out. For everybody else who's watched this video, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Drop a like, share and comment. Let me know if you've got other tech questions and I'll do my very best to help you out. Plasma1945, out.